when you have a car that's diesel or gas, you go to the gas station, you fill it up. All you have to know is what grade you need, premium, or if it's diesel, definitely diesel. But when you have an electric vehicle, an electric car, you have to know something else. You have to understand a simple concept. Also, what's with all these levels? I'm Ryan from Rocky Mountain Tesla, and we're sharing this data because it's electrifying and so that you can really understand what you need to know in order to go electric. It's something you want to do, like me, maybe it's because you're worried about the environment. I'm worried about the oceans getting too warm and the corals bleaching. Today, we are going to figure out what all this means. We're going to talk about some simple concepts that will really help you understand how much electricity you really need on a given day. If you need level one or level two, which one do you really need at home? You really need to know what a level one charging situation even means. What is level two? What's level three? Level four? No, there's no level four, just kidding. Right, Monty? There's no level four. You have questions like, will I be able to charge when I get home? Will I be able to charge enough when I get home for the next day, for a trip the next day and things like this? So you need to understand a simple concept about level one and level two charging. A level one charging is basically a wall outlet. It's the lowest voltage. It's the basically the lowest amperage. But there's a simple concept to understand before you even think level one, level two. That's voltage times amperage. And when you multiply those two, you come up with the wattage rate that your car can charge at. And if it charges at that rate for an hour, that's the kilowatt hour rate, for example. So this is the basic. 110 volts is the standard wall outlet multiplied by say 12 amps gives you approximately 1320 watts of power coming out of that outlet and into the car. So the basic division you do is a thousand. You divide that by a thousand and you have 1.32 kilowatt charging rate. If that charges for one hour, that means you get 1.32 kilowatt hours in that hour. When you start doing the math on different uh, outlets, things like a 20 amp outlet that gives you 16 amps into the vehicle and still 110 volts, you come up with a different amount. That amount is approximately 1.76 kilowatts charging rate. So what is a level two then? That is basically a 240 volt outlet. Even a dryer vent outlet is a level two in reality because it's 240 volts multiplied by the amperage. Um, for example, we have a charging situation when we visit my mother-in-law, we're able to charge using an, a basic extension, well, fancy extension out of the dryer outlet so that we can charge our car at about 240 volts times 24 amps. So better than five kilowatt charging rate. In eight to 10 hours, we can basically be charged from a pretty low battery percentage, all the way to the top, all the way to 100 for a trip home, for example. That's the basic math you need to understand is multiplying voltage times amperage, dividing by a thousand, and that's the amount of kilowatt hours you would get per hour. Then you have to divide whatever kilowatt hour battery pack that you have and divide that by that rate to get how many hours it would take to charge your vehicle. Knowing all of this, is this going to be enough to make you comfortable with making a transition to an electric car? Is it really going to prevent you from going electric? Well, there are things you need to understand, obviously, and they will generally revolve around how much you drive on a daily basis. So for example, if you drive 40 kilometers a day, that's close to 10% of the standard range plus battery in a given day. And if it's cold, it's probably gonna be more like 20% of the battery on that day. Now, if you drive 200 kilometers on a day in the winter, yes, that will probably use most of the battery that day, especially if it's really cold. Uh, so you really have to think about 
where you're going to stop and charge when you're stopping to do stuff. You're probably going to change your route or the places you visit knowing that you can stop there to get a charge or at least get a few percent back on your battery. And that is something that we need more of. We need more uh, infrastructure in order to keep uh, electric cars charged. So now that you've looked at this math and figured out how much you drive on a daily basis, you can start figuring out exactly how much your car would need to charge on a daily basis. Would you be able to get away with level one? Perhaps if you park underground in a heated garage, you can do it all year round because you only drive maybe 20 to 40 kilometers during a weekday and you don't drive to work. So your car is plugged in 20 hours a day or you plug in at work like we can with my wife and her job and she can get the charge we need in those one or two days that she's at work. Whatever the case is, this is not a reason to hold off from buying an electric car. You will be able to figure it out. And if you have questions or you have comments and ideas that you want to share, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. If you're wondering what kind of charging situation you need when you're visiting family, check out this video over here. And if you're wondering what the standard range plus with a rear wheel drive is like to drive in winter and snowy conditions, check out this video down here.